Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just a few comments on the bill, if I may. You may proceed, sir. So I, uh, I've been listening to the debate, and uh, I think I'm trying to get my head around uh, what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to get uh, as many individuals as we can, uh, as many retirees as we can, in a comfortable place uh, uh, by the time they reach retirement age. And I, and I get that. I get the spirit of, the, of this legislation. Uh, but I have some, a few issues. It will only take a few minutes. A few issues I wanted to put out there um, as, as we chew on, this, uh, chew on this issue. I think I have a hard time supporting um, more government, a quasi-public agency, inserting itself into uh, the private sector, uh, into managing defined contribution benefit packages when we have so much work to do uh, within the state of Connecticut in reforming uh, uh, our pension uh, obligations as, as they stand. I think before we start inserting ourselves into the private sector, we need to, we need to transition um, as, soon as, as soon as possible in, in, a, in a responsible way. Um, as many um, uh, new members of the state workforce as possible we need, to, we need to create a defined contribution benefit package uh, in the, within the state of Connecticut uh, to get a grip on our long-term uh, unfunded liabilities. Uh, otherwise, I, I feel um, very concerned about what unfunded pension liabilities will do to the fiscal uh, health of this state. You know, I sat with a uh, financial planner from Edward Jones not too long ago. It took about 10 minutes from picking up the phone scheduling a meeting, sitting down and going through the program to set up a Roth IRA, 10 minutes. No upfront costs. You can pick up a phone, talk to a member of the, of the organization whenever I'd like. And with an automatic payment from, uh, uh, from um, diverting, uh, diverting a piece of my paycheck uh, into the fund, I can take advantage of the law of compounding interest and 20 years from now, 30 years from now, um, be looking at uh, a respectable and uh, a respectable retirement plan. The problem is, we're not teaching young people how to think that way. Young people are traveling through their high school, or their, their elementary school, or middle school, and, and high school careers. And by the time they reach 18, they don't know how to balance a checkbook. They can recite Romeo and Juliet, they can take a standardized test within 60 minutes, but they don't know what a budget looks like. They have no idea how money works. And I feel that I have to contribute to the discussion in this regard and just strongly urge us to look at ways not just to leverage a government body to solve an immediate problem. We need to start baking in financial literacy into the lives of young people so they know, they know what types of mechanisms are accessible. I don't understand how we can allow 18 years to go by and a young man or a young woman entering a competitive workforce who will be chasing the dollar for the rest of their life, likely in debt, if they decide to go to high, uh, seek higher education. We don't teach them the law of compounding interest. We don't teach them how to balance a checkbook. I think that's a disservice. I think that's the real issue here that we need to, we need to, uh, to address. I don't believe a quasi-public agency is, uh, is necessarily the answer. Um, and, and, I, and I urge us to look uh, at, at ways to, uh, to educate uh, the populace um, on how to, how to have a command uh, over the dollar as, as opposed to uh, uh, doing it for them.